If you watched my last video, you may have been thinking, wow, that is a lot of wasted, beautiful lumber. And I absolutely hate wasting lumber. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I took scraps from my last project and make jewelry from them. So please enjoy. So here I just need to get the thickness of the wood down to a good size for jewelry, which tends to be about anywhere from an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. So I'm just resawing this and I just cut off anything that was solid wood. I want pieces that have the glued in different species so it gives my jewelry some dimension. I occasionally do some solid wood pieces as well but the purpose of using these scraps is that it's already uh, glued up pieces. So right here I'm using a little different technique so it's an odd shape. I'm just going to take um, two passes in just as far as I need for the jewelry instead of cutting all the way through. And then I'll just uh, split this. I'm just going to cut it just to as far as I cut and I'm going to end up with three pieces that are going to be a perfect size for making guitar picks. All right, so I only used about a quarter of the scraps uh, so far, but I'm just going to trace out different shapes. I'm sticking to mostly guitar picks and paddle boards here. Um, the reason why I like to do specific shapes as opposed to just a lot of general jewelry, you know, at the markets I tend to sell general jewelry just fine, but when I'm looking at primarily selling through Etsy. You really have to have things that are niche enough that you know somebody actually gets to your page. So if, if somebody's just searching jewelry, well now there's millions of different pieces to compete with. So if there's a, a little bit more of a specific item, you're going to be more likely to be able to get your product in front of somebody's eyes. You'll notice that most of the pieces when I get to a final product uh, most of the pieces are actually going to be with the lines through them at a diagonal. I not only like this look better, but it makes it a lot easier when you're doing your final shaping. It, you really don't have to be quite as perfect on symmetry as when you have lines that are perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal. I'm going to do some of those as well, but for the most part I try to stick to things where the wood grain and the, the lines of the different species are going to be more at a diagonal. So back at the bandsaw now, I'm just going to get these to a very rough shape. They do not have to be perfect at all. The disc sander is really where you're going to be doing the final shaping. Um, and this is really nice to have a bandsaw for, but you could do this with a handsaw as well because again, you don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape at all. Just get it fairly close to your line um, and the, the disc sander will easily take care of the rest. Okay, so these are the 28 final pieces that I have in their rough uh, shape. So here at the disc sander, I'm just gonna you know, shape them up a little bit better, give them final shape. Um, here, I'm just gonna show you a couple examples this way. Um, I had already shaped all of the items, but the camera angle was pretty bad and my hands were in the way most of the, the time. So I'm just giving another view here. So hopefully you can kind of see how this works. The disc sander pulls you know, the wood down, so so it's pretty safe to be using fairly small pieces um, close. You just have to be careful not to, you know, make sure that you don't get your knuckles um, against the, the sandpaper. I've done that. I tend to like to leave a little bit of blood in most of my projects. Um, but here again, I'm just going to whip these out. To do all 28 of them took me um, roughly 16, 17 minutes. So this is the really tedious part. Um, I'm going to finish these up by I'm going from 120, 220, and 320 sandpaper. Um, this is very time consuming. If I tried to do all 28 of these at a, a time, um, my hand would be very cramped up. So what I tend to do is, you know, one day I'll be going through my scrap bin and I'll just rough cut and rough sand out a bunch of these and then I just kind of keep them in a little bowl and when I'm waiting for things to dry from time to time I just pick one up and work on it um, and so I'm, I'm really never doing more than a few of these at a time.
One of these uh, foam sanding blocks is really nice for doing the edges. Um, it gives a nice kind of rounded finished look to it. So I always hit this um, as well again at the end. So now I'm gonna drill a little hole in these and um, I've found that it's definitely better if I, if I punch a little spot first so that um, it makes it a lot easier, especially when I'm trying to get such a fine little hole in, you wanna have that hole partially started. So I'm gonna do that here. Here I'm applying CA glue. You can't really tell because I apparently had a terrible camera angle but I'm applying just a little drop of CA glue that I just gently blow through um, just because you know you might not get finish um, right on the inside of the hole and I wanna make sure that it's nice and sealed up everywhere. So I'm gonna apply that little drop and then later I'm gonna sand, sand off anything that may have made a mess uh, through the hole. So these three pieces are guitar picks that I had from Scraps um, from a coaster set and I have still have a few more of these but as I said before I'll just tend to you know sand on them in between so these three I had sanded so as long as I'm doing the holes for the other ones I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up as well. So here I'm doing that final little um, touch-up job sanding, particularly, especially right where the hole is. So I'm just getting the dust off of these with a little bit of mineral spirits, and then I'm gonna hang them up on this just foam insulation piece. Um, that was just, um, a little pin works really well to allow them to dry. So for these pieces, I'm just spraying them with a little bit of lacquer. I've used a lot of different finishes on the jewelry over, you know, a couple of years that I've been making it. Um, and it, it really doesn't matter as long as you get it sealed up nicely. I also hit it with a little wax after um, you can use, you know, Danish oil, lacquer, any poly finish, you know, whatever your preference is. All right. So here I'm going to actually put um, the hardware on the jewelry and there's a lot of videos out there on how to do this and there's a lot of different options for what kind of pieces you can do. Um, sorry that for some reason the, the image is not very good here but anyway I'm just putting different clasps and, and little rings on them. All right, so here's a final look at the nine pieces um, that I made today. And um, you're about to see what's still left. So I still have all of that scrap wood left. And I now have these other uh, 24 pieces um, that I still have to do final sanding on. So you can see out of a little bit of scrap wood, you can get a lot of jewelry. 
And these are just some um, examples of different pieces that I've made, you know, different shapes. Of course, the guitar picks are very popular um, in both necklace as well as uh, keychain format. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you have fun creating something beautiful yourself.